Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 17. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great, mighty, and awesome who shows no Per partiality nor take be bribe. Um, I'm going to be talking about what it means to be holy. The verse first, the verse, um, first Peter 1, 14 through 16. As obedient children, do not confirm to be evil desires. You have when you live in ignorance, but just as who called you is holy. So be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. And what it means to live holy. You can't do, oh, you can't do what other people do. You can't do what all your friends do. Like, oh, you can't do what your friends are doing if it's against God. Um, he made us so he could pray, we could praise and worship him and live for him. For example, um, not lying to your parents or stealing from a store with friends or by yourself just to fit in, or even robbing a bank. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They kind of caught me off guard. I didn't think they would be finished that early. Praise the Lord and happy Father's Day to everybody. And happy Juneteenth to you while we're at it. Hallelujah. We thank God for being here. Amen. We thank God for all that he's doing. Amen. And we thank God for our young people. Amen. This is Youth Month. Amen. And I'm going to try to speak to the young people. Although I'm not young anymore. I just made my 21st birthday. <laughs> as many as you need praise the Lord if you can bow your heads with me come on young people if you can bow your heads with me young people young people if you can bow your heads with me yes Lord we thank you we bless you we honor you we give you praise this morning oh God we thank you for what you're doing we thank you for all that you've done we pray that you would continue to move and have your way Pray for this service that you would bless it, O oh God, and pray for the people of God that they may receive what you have for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Like I said, happy Father's Day to all. Amen. This is a great day. DeAndre and I were over there talking about Father's Day and, <laughs> and what it means to be a father and the gifts that you get and the way you receive them. Amen. But it is a great day. I myself, I had a great dad. Miracle. Did you know I had a great dad? I have a great, I had a great dad. He passed away 
Yeah, he was a good dad. Amen. I love my dad. My dad was something else. Just by way of Father's Day, it was about a few weeks ago. I went up to go see my mom because my dad's no longer around. And I don't know if my mother knew at all. But as we were getting ready to leave, she had never done this before. She said, can you stay a while? She said, can you stay? I said, sure, mom, I can stay. I don't know if she knew we drove separate cars that day. I'm not sure, but we did. So I was able to stay a while with my mom and talk. And as we were sitting there talking, we just happened to start talking about birthdays. All of the birthdays that go on in our family from month to month. And we landed on the month of August, August, which is the, the month of my birth. And I, we just, we sat there for a while because we have a lot of August birthdays. And my mom, whenever she would refer to my dad, she would always call him your dad. Not your dad, but you dad. She said, your dad wants you. Okay. Your dad. Yeah, your dad wants you. Okay. He's my, my father. Yes. Your dad. So we're sitting there talking about birthdays. And she told me, she said, your dad birthdays in March. I said, wait a minute. And she said it again. She said, your dad birthdays in March. So I'm thinking to myself, my dad birthdays in December. And she said it again, your dad birthdays is in March. So I'm thinking, did she bring me here to tell me a secret? <laughs> is she trying to tell me something? What in the world? <laughs> Is this it? Is she finally getting ready to tell me that my dad is not my dad? And my dad is another dad who had a birthday in March? I'm thinking, oh, no. Mama, what you getting ready to do? So I had to, I had to step in. I don't like to correct my mama. I said, Mom, dad birthday's in December. She said, I'm not talking about you, dad. I'm talking about my dad. I'm talking about my dad birthdays in March. I said, oh, okay, yeah, 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 that's good to hear. That's good to hear. But I was so glad that her dad's birthday was in March and not my dad, amen? So, <laughs> so that was one of my Father's Day stories, amen? I'm going to get into this word. I don't plan to be before you long. Friends, how many of us have them? Friends, Friends, yes, ones we can depend on. Amen. Without exception, everybody has friends. Amen. Everybody. Raise your hand if you have one friend. Raise your hand if you have one friend. Raise your hand if you have one friend. You, have one friend. you three down here are friends. I'm not understanding why you're not raising your hands. Do you have one friend? I want you to raise your hand if you have one friend. If you have one friend. If you have one friend, raise your hand. Do you have at least one friend? You have no friends. Is she your friend? Is she your friend? Everybody has at least one friend. If you have more than one friend, raise your both hands. Okay, everybody has at least more than a friend, at least one. And friends are good, amen? Do you believe that friends are good? Friends are good. But sometimes, friends may not be that good, amen? Sometimes friends can't be that, they may not be that good for you. We all agree that friends are good, but sometimes we got to beware of our friends, those that we call friends. Listen, if you show me your friend, I'll show you where you're going to be in the next 20 years. If you show me the company that you keep, I can determine what your future is going to look like. You show me who you hang around with in school. If I go up to your school and I see you, who you're hanging around with, I can know exactly where you're going. Exactly. Amen. Because I used to have friends like that, too. Sometimes your friends can be good and sometimes your friends may not be that good. So miracle it's important that we watch out who our friends are. Let me see that for a minute, baby, because that's a distraction to me. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a friendship. Oh, beautiful. Oh, it's right on point with the lesson. Let me see the friendship bracelet and I'll give it back to you after service. Uh, 
Friends. How many of us have them? Friends. Hallelujah. My father understood the concept of friends. He would monitor my friends and those that he allowed into his house. He would carefully monitor them. And not only would he carefully monitor them, but he would also let me know, X, that one ain't no good. That one going to lead you to trouble. He was always right. He was always right when he evaluated the friends that I brought to the house because he saw something that I couldn't see. I just thought they were cool. They was this, they was that. But he saw what they were really like. So your friends, they're important, but it's important that we and you let your parents monitor the friends that you in, that 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 they allow into your life. Amen. So it's important that we that we know who are you following? You have to ask yourself that question. Who are you following? Who are you following? Are you following Jesus? Or are you following your friends? Because there is a difference, amen? There is a difference between following Jesus and following your friends. So we want to be careful that we follow our friend. Now, we follow Jesus. Let me see that for a minute. That we follow Jesus. I'm getting all types of treats today. It's absolutely amazing. A bag. Who knew that a bag could bring such entertainment and enjoyment? Just an empty bag. Who would know? Who would know that it could do that? Absolutely incredible. <laughs> yeah, it just could be the next big invention, amen? So who are you following? Who are you following on Facebook? Who are you following on Instagram? Who are you following on Twitter? Because all of these people influence your behavior and they can determine your destiny if you let them. Does anybody know who is the number one followed person on Facebook? No. I'm talking to the young people. Who's the number one followed person on Facebook? Who do you think, Caleb, who do you think it is? Who do you think? Say it again. No, I know George knows who it is. Who is it, George? Huh? Come on, George, you're a soccer fan. I'm giving you a clue. You said it? I didn't hear you. Say it one more time. Who is he? That is the number one follow person on Facebook. On Facebook. Yes, yes. George, say his name again. He is a soccer player, football player. Amen. So friends, he is one of the most followed persons in, persons in the world. But what do we gain when we follow celebrities, when we follow friends on Facebook? Really nothing. We just get the thrill of living, the, of watching them live their lives. We don't gain anything from it. We just watch them live their lives. And we say, wow, that's really exciting. That's really exciting. But the question is, who are you following? Are you following them? Or are you following the Lord? On April the 19th, 1987, round about approximately 104 in the afternoon, at 1100 Divisadero Street, I made a decision to follow Jesus. And I've never regretted that decision. I've never regretted the decision that I made to follow Jesus. I had a lot of friends, but they really weren't going anywhere. But I made a decision to follow Jesus. And I have been following him ever since. There has not been a time since I made that decision that I said, you know what? I think I'll go back. I think I'll go back to my old way of living. I think I'll go back to my old friends. I have never even desired to go back there. So once you make a decision to follow Jesus, it is imperative. Say imperative. That means very important that you stick with that decision. I'm going to read the scripture this is a scripture I, I wanted to really speak to the young people, so I had to dig way down. I went and got me a, I didn't get it, I just looked up the translation. This is out of the International Children's Bible. So it speaks in children language, where they can understand it. And it's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 
1 Corinthians 15, and I'm going to read verses 33 and 34. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 and 40, 34. And it says, do not be fooled a trick. Bad friends will ruin good company. Good, bad friends will ruin good habits. Come back to your right way of thinking and stop sinning. I say this to shame you. Some of you do not know God. Paul says, don't be fooled or don't be tricked. What does it mean to be tricked? What does it mean when somebody trick you? I saw Brother Johnny play a trick on somebody in the room when we were eating. We were eating breakfast this morning. He played a trick on somebody. Who did he play a trick on? Who did he play a trick on, Johnny? I don't remember. Cash. That's right, Cash. He had Cash give him five and then dot, dot, and then he pulled his hand back. And he said, too slow. He played a trick on him. That's what playing a trick is. You put something out there and you, you make people, it's a trick. It's not really real just to kind of kind of get at you. But he says, don't be fooled. You, you don't have to be fooled. He says, bad friends can ruin good habits. What's a habit? More, not, not, the, not the burger place. Not habit burger. But what is a habit? Yes. Habit is something you keep doing. That, well, sometimes a habit can be good. And sometimes a habit can be bad. What's a good habit? Young people, young people, what's a good habit? Praying is a good habit. What's another good habit? Um, yes. Never what? Oh, never regret that you chose God. That's a good habit to have. That's a good habit to have. It says bad friends will ruin or mess up good habits. You can have bad friends that can mess up some of your good habits that your parents have so desired to put in you. That, means, that is prayer. And I love what uh, female Dudley said, not robbing a bank. Amen. What an extreme. I mean, like robbing a bank, not just a store, she said, but a bank, a bank. God, God, a bank. <laughs> it's just kind of it just kind of struck me. So we want to make sure that our friends, those that we allow into our lives, that they don't mess up the good habits that your parents have put inside of you. And some of those habits are praying. Some of those habits are going to church. Some of those habits are singing. Some of those habits are what else? Reading scripture, memorizing scripture, all of that. We want to make sure that our friends don't mess up those good habits. And some of you have good habits like that. Amen. You have the habit of, of going, of getting up early, studying. You don't want your friends to mess that up for you. Let me see that for you, baby. Oh, I think I got another treat. I got another treat. I'm just racking them up today. Bless the name of the Lord. This must be Father's Day. You don't want your friends to mess up your habits. You don't want your friends to mess up your study habits. Amen. You don't want your friends to mess up your study habits. When I was in school, I had a group of friends, and you know what they love to do? They love to cut class. And I hung around them, so I, I started learning to enjoy to cut a little bit of class myself. Amen. Messed up my education. Amen. So you can't let your friends mess up your good habits. Amen. So how do we, how do you, not we, but you, how do you prevent, how do you prevent your friends from messing up those habits that we're trying to place inside of you? This is really for my parents. This is for you and for my, and for the parents. I need my parents to write down some of this for your young people because they're so intentive and engrossed with me that they can't write this all down. But I need you to write it down for them. By learning how much, by learning as much as you can about God, that's a way you can prevent friends from messing up good habits. By learning as much as you can about God, you need to learn about who God is. Amen? Not who he is to you, because God wants a relationship with you. You need to learn about the love of God. Amen? You also need to learn about the truths that are found in the Bible. So where do we, you, 
find where do you study the Bible at? Where do you learn things in the Bible? Somebody tell me. Female Dudley, where do you learn things in the Bible at? Um, the church, yes. Yes, the church. Where do you, at what? Do you have Sunday school? Do you have Sunday school? Yes, you learn it in Sunday school also. So you need to learn those things, those truths that are in the Bible. And the only place, not the only place, you can learn them at church. Where else can you learn them at? Home with your parents. Many of you have parents that will sit down and have devotions with you. So you learn them from your parents. You learn them at church. Where else do you learn them from? Not just your parents. Some of you have what? Grand grandparents thank you adults you have aunts you have uncles you have brothers you have cousins that can teach you about the word of god so you need to get as much of that inside of you as you can so that you won't let others lead you astray who are you following you can learn about god when you sing a song what song do we sing this morning mr dudley what song do we sing this morning There's no God like Jehovah or you're, uh, you can say it with me, um, amazing, amazing. Yes, yes, yes. That you're amazing, amazing. So we learn in that song that God is what? Amazing. He's amazing. He's absolutely amazing. So we can learn about God through the songs that we sing. Amen? If we actually sing the song. But that's another story for another day. The other thing you can do to prevent yourself from following your friends, you can learn to grow your friendship in the Lord. Grow your friendship in the Lord. And you grow your friendship in the Lord by letting him have the number one spot in your life. He is the number one priority. I can determine how much you love God by looking at your you by looking at what you watch on YouTube. They know, not, not just me, I'm, I'm not that smart, but YouTube know how much you love the Lord also. Did you know that? Did you know YouTube know how much you love the Lord? Because they feed your content based on what you're watching. If all you watch is cartoons and noonie boons, that's all they're going to show you. But if every once in a while you listen to some Fred Hammond or something else, they're going to populate that in your content. Amen. So you need to make God your number one priority. And you do that, you do that by determining in your mind as best you can at your age that I'm going to serve the Lord. Whenever there's an opportunity to serve, I'm going to be there to serve. You can grow your friendship by praying every day. How many of you pray every day? Pray, I'm talking about, I, I, it's good to see the adult's hands. It's good to see your hands. It's good to see your hands, but I'm looking for some young folks. How many of you pray every day? Every day, every day. Somebody tell me, what is prayer? Young people, what is prayer? Yes, Mr. George, Jorge. Yes, yes. What a great source to talk to God. Tell him how, what's going on in your life. He is eager to hear what's going on in your life. Although he already knows, he's still eager to hear about it. The other way you can follow after God and not follow after your friends is learning how to tell God thank you. Learning how to tell God thank you. Let me, let me ask you this. If you had a special friend at school, and every day, I'm talking about every day, every day that ends in a Y, they brought you something special, a treat, special, just for you. They did it every day, not because you were nice, not because you treated them well, not for any of that. They just brought you something special. Would you tell them thank you? Yeah, because they're being what? They're being nice. They're being nice to you. They're being nice to you. You didn't do anything. You didn't give them any money. As a matter of fact, you're probably pretty mean to them. But every day, they bring you something special. Listen, every day, every day that ends in a Y, God does something special for us. Every day that ends in a Y, God does something special for us. What are some of the special things that God done, has done for us? Christopher the Cool, what are some of the special things God has done for us? Every day, he wakes us up. 
What else has he done for us? What does he do every day that ends in a Y? So come on, what does he do for you? I'm not talking about for me. What does he do for you every day that ends in a Y? He wakes you up. What else does he do? Have you, let me, let me break this down. Just, just, have you ever tried to breathe without air in your lungs? Have you ever tried that without air in your lungs? It's impossible. But every day he gives you a new breath. You ever tried to walk without any legs? Kind of impossible, right? But you got those legs to walk with. You ever tried to live without your heart beating? It's impossible, but every day he gives you this special gift, a heart that's beating, air in your lungs, legs to walk with. Anybody here ever woke up in a park? You, couldn't, you didn't sleep in your bed, but you woke up outside in a park someplace? I don't think you had that testimony. Every day you wake up in a house or an apartment or someplace. You roll out of your own bed. Those are just some of the little special things God does for you. And because he does those things for you every day, we need to say thank you. I'm talking to my young people. We need to say thank you. Listen, thank you. Being thankful is a way to worship God. Do you want to worship God? Then tell him thank you. Come on, try it with me. Say thank you. I'm talking to our young people. Tell them thank you. That's pretty weak. I'm telling, say thank you. Come on, say it like you mean it. Thank you. What if I gave you a, a big old box of candy? Wouldn't you say, thank you. God is giving you a big old box of candy every day. And every day you ought to say, thank you. Thank you. That is a step into worship. When you learn how to thank God for what those little gifts that he gives you. And I'm not even talking about the big gift. I'm not talking about salvation. Just learn how to thank him for the little things that he's done in your life. Amen. The other way you can continue to follow after Jesus. This is important right here. Say important. Young people, say important. I need young people right up front. Important. Say it with me. Important. Important. Amen. The other way you can do it is this. You got to keep in your memory God's word. What does he mean by that? Keep in my memory. We got to remember God's word. And we don't have a problem remembering things. Amen. Yesterday was what? We had our Juneteenth celebration. How, where you at? How much gum did you eat yesterday? Don't, yeah, she, she kind of, yeah. She had 37 pieces of gum. She had, female Dudley had so much gum that her mouth was like this. Her mouth was like this. She had a big old wad of gum. We had a whole mess of gum. We had a whole mess of fun. And what do we do? We what? We remember those things, right? Because they're fun, right? So we, we remember things that are fun. We also remember what? We remember each other's names, right? What, what's her name? The girl right here next to you? This one? Yeah. Miracle. What's the other girl's name? So you remember her name. So you do have, you have a memory. You have a memory. You can remember things. Let me ask you this. What's, when is your birthday? Yes. What's your name again? And when is your birthday? Don't, don't, don't say, it. actually, we shouldn't say it. I don't want to, I don't want to give out too much PII. That, that could be deadly. You remember your birthday, right? You don't have to say it. You remember your birthday? Yeah, you remember your birthday? George, you remember your birthday? You remember your birthday? I know you don't remember your birthday. You are, you are robbing banks. Of course you can't remember your birthday. That's another story for another day. But we remember what we need to remember. We remember things in school, because that's why we go to school. We remember that one plus one is seven. What? What is it? It's two. See, you remember that. So you got all types of memory things going on. So there are things you can remember. We remember, and I know this one, but don't help me with it because sometimes I'm a little slow. We remember that cat is spelled C-T-A. Cat. Is that you? Is that how you spell cat? C-T-A? You remember. My goodness, your memory is it's, it's extraordinary. We remember what we need to remember. So, young people, 
we also need to remember scripture. We need to remember scripture. What happens every Christmas and Easter? What happens? What does Sister Alice do? Yes. She gives you scripture to remember. Amen. She gives you scripture to remember. And let me just say this in, in honor of my children. My children and those other youth at River of Life who have been around a while, they believe that you don't get enough scripture. They don't believe you get enough because my children believe they had a whole book to remember. And they did, too. But you need to remember scripture. You need to memorize it. You need to put it in your heart. You need to remember it. Why do you need to remember scripture? Because there are times in your life where, where things may not be going well. There may be a time in your life where you may be afraid, and then you can pull up a scripture that will help you. Because God says, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of love and of a sound mind. When we remember scripture, it helps us. It helps us. I want you to see this. Again, this is all out of your children's Bible. It says in Psalms 119 and 105, your word is like a lamp for my feet and a light for my way. God, God's word, it can guide you. But the only way it's going to guide you is you got to remember it. You have to put in the work to remember some scripture. You've already shown me you have the capability and the capacity to remember. So you can't say, well, I just can't remember anything. I don't know anything. You already know that two plus two is, what is it? Four. She already know it. I got one. She's remembering how to walk. Everybody remembers something, and you too have the capacity to remember. So you need to remember God's word. So you don't have to wait till Christmas or Easter to memorize scripture. This is for the parents. Say, pa parents, parents, you can memorize a scripture every week. Did you know that? You can memorize a scripture every week. We're going we're gonna to memorize one today. First Thessalonians 5 and 17 says, pray always. Can you remember that? Say it with me. Pray always. You already memorized the scripture. Pray always. Pray always. Pray always. So you have the ability to memorize scripture. So you need to remember scripture, put it in your heart, and that way you can follow Jesus. The last thing as we're going through, through this, you need to remember that God loves you. You need to remember that God loves you. Do you know that? You need to remember that Jesus loves you and that he really does love you. Amen? That he really does love you and he wants you to follow him. That is his plan for your life, that you would follow him. Not your friends, but you follow him. Mother Betty Jean talked about this scripture this morning. I didn't know she was and she didn't know I was going to talk about it either. But in the book of Matthew, Chapter number 19, it reads and says, Then people brought their little children to Jesus so that he can put his hands on them and pray for them. And when his followers saw this, they told the people, Stop bringing all them bad baby kids to Jesus. That's a Sunnydale version. Jesus said to them, Let the little children come to me. Don't stop them because the kingdom of heaven belongs to people like these children. After Jesus put his hands on the children, he left them. So what we see here is, listen, when Jesus came to earth, he didn't come as a grown man. He came as a baby and he grew up as a child. So Jesus knows what it's like to be, how old are you? How old are you? Eight. He knows what it's like to be eight. How old are you? Uh, cool, Chris. Ten. How old are you? Jay, how old are you? 11. And how old are you? You say it again? I like when you say it. 14. Um, George, how old are you? You said what? 15. And how old are you, bank robber? 20 years old. And she's a bank robber? And I'm going to say that. Um, so he knows what it's like to be all of your... How old are you? How old are you? She's six. Okay. She can't talk today. That's okay. Uh, so Jesus knows what it's like to be all of your ages because he wasn't born a man. He was born a baby and he went through all of your ages. So Jesus, 
He can identify with everything you're going through. That's why he loves you. He can identify with everything that you're going through. Everything you've experienced, Jesus has already experienced. So Jesus has, in that scripture that we read, he shows his love for the children. Where others did not welcome him, welcome them, Jesus does. Where others tried to prevent the children from coming to Jesus, Jesus said, no, bring these little babies to me because I love them. I care for them. And he prayed for them. That's what he did. He prayed for them. And Jesus is still praying for you today because he loves you. He loves them. And he prayed for them. And he laid his hands on them. The laying on of hands was a, was, was a way of blessing the children, blessing them. And to bless something is to speak well of it. So Jesus speaks well of you when he blesses you. He knows you. Anybody remember, anybody here that was here Wednesday night? Wednesday night when, uh, who did the Bible study on Wednesday night? Anybody remember? Brianna. And what did Brianna have on the screen at the end of it? She had words of encouragement, affirmation. When Jesus blesses you, he's speaking over your life. He's speaking well of you. He wants the very best for you. He wants the very best for you. Your friends, cutting in them, they don't want the best for you. All they want is what they want. They may, they may want to use you. They may want to see you get in trouble. They don't care if you get in trouble. But Jesus wants the best for you. That's why when the others said, keep them kids away, Jesus said, no, no, no. Let the little children come. You may not want them. And this is important. Jesus said, you may not understand it, but let them come to me. Let them come to me. Jesus has an open place for you. You have an open invitation to go to Jesus anytime you want to. So one way, one way, this is one of many ways to, to continue to follow after Jesus is to remember what Jesus has done for you. Amen? To remember what Jesus has done for you. Give me one thing that Jesus has done for you. One thing Jesus has done for you. Pause that, pause that thought for a second. I'm asking everybody the same question. So just get it in your mind. Not everybody. Let me rephrase that because I, I appear, I see the, I got something to do. No, I'm asking all the young people up front here. Name one thing Jesus has, Jesus has done for you. Go. He's blessing you. Say it again. He gave you food? Huh? Oh, he gave you food. Are you, you okay? You kind of, I got to come. You're not really feeling, you're not feeling it? One thing Jesus has done for you. Get, you better say that loud. Say that loud. He gave me loving parents. Amen. Almost brings a tear to my eye. Let me ask you this. Why were they, did he give you loving godparents too? Did he give you loving godparents? Gave, gave, him, gave her loving parents and loving godparents. Bless the name of the Lord. One thing. He watched over him. Amen. He makes us breathe his air. Do you know if the government could tax air, they would? They would. They would tax it in a minute. But it's, it's his air that we breathe. It is his air that we breathe. Jay, name one thing. Just one. Huh? I can't hear you. you say, what did he say? A working brain. Come on, come on. Somebody clap your hands. A working brain. Now, anybody ever seen The Wiz, you know that one of them characters didn't have a brain at all. But God has given us a what? A working brain. Mr. Dudley, one thing. He's kept me alive. Amen. See, when we remember, when we remember all of those things, 
it helps us to continue to follow Jesus. We're going to do something unique and different. I need my young people to stand up. If you got two legs, count them if you need to. Just stand up on them. Amen. Just stand. You're not you're still not feeling it, huh? It's okay. I understand. It was a rough day yesterday. You had a lot of bubble gum, so I could understand. You were after all that chewing you did, you probably, yeah, I can understand. We are going to do something before I before I do this. On my job at the Department of Veterans Affairs, we have training on what they call COOP training, C-O-O-P, COOP training. And COOP training stands for Continuity of Operation Procedure. And what that is, is it is the way that the government, what the government has put in place so that if anything should happen at the VA, they would be able to continue to operate. They'll be able to continue to operate. And one of the things that they do to ensure the ability to continue to operate, they, they, they do what they call tests, train, and then they evaluate it. They test, they train, and they evaluate. One day, as shocking as this may be, we won't always be here. This is your church. This is it right here. They're not the church of tomorrow. They're the church of right now. They are the church of right now. And it is imperative that we test them and that we train them, that we evaluate their opportunity, their, their effort, so that when we're all gone, this church, this thing, and I'm not, and when I say the church, I'm not talking about river of life. I'm talking about the church universal, the church everywhere, so that it can continue to move forward. If we don't train our young people, the church is just one generation from not being a church. So it is imperative, it's of the highest importance that we train them, that we put into effect this coop, that we train them to be able to, to do what God's called them to do. Come on, clap your hands and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, now you can say thank you. Now you can utilize what we've talked about. You can say thank you. You can stand to your feet and say thank you. You can stand to your feet and say thank you. You can stand to your feet and say thank you. You can stand to your feet and say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for another day. Come on, say thank you, Lord, for another day. Say, thank you, Lord, for another day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us and all that you've been to us. Lord, I pray for these young people that you would keep them, oh God, that you would move and have your way in their lives, oh God, that they will follow after you, oh God. In spite of their friends, oh God, in spite of the circumstances in their lives, oh God, that they would make a decision to follow after you, Lord, to pursue you with everything, oh God. We bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, clap your hands and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. If we don't train our young people, the world is eager to train them. If we don't train our young people, the world is eager. They, they, they are looking forward to training them in whatever mischief they want to be trained in. Amen? So it is imperative that we train our young people. And I understand that yesterday was a very busy day. And you guys did a lot of activities. I mean, I listen. In all the days of my living, I don't think I've chewed that much gum. I, the gum that I saw you guys chewing, it just, it was amazing to me. The candy that you ate, absolutely amazing to me. So I understand that your energy may be a little low, amen? But thank God that God's energy is never low towards you. His energy is never low towards you, and you know that you owe him a praise, amen? You owe him a praise, and it starts with what? Thank you. Just start with thank you. Amen. We're getting ready to receive our offering. If one of uh, Miss Miracle, 
Can you get the basket back there with your friend, Drea, to pass out the envelopes, please? Again, happy Father's Day to all, all that are fathers. Amen. Amen. After service. Amen. Amen. All right. Have you, are you guys finished? Are you guys finished? Can somebody please find out what's going on with them? They seem to be having some difficulty. I need an adult to help them, to guide them, to lead them, to direct them. Amen. Does everybody have an envelope that needs one? All right. Do you have anything? So to April. Do you have anything? All right. All right. We're getting ready to stand. We're going to be dismissed. All right. You can. We're going to pray for the offering and then you can come and give it after service. Amen? Young people, when God has done something special for us, what do we say? I'm going to try this one more time. And you gave it to me, but I got I didn't follow up to what you said. Young people, I, I go back to my cousin Vinny. Young people, and only young people, <laughs> the youth. <laughs> When God does something special for us, what do we say? Thank you. Thank you very much. Amen. Everybody, when God does something special for us, what do we say? Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We give you praise, oh God. We thank you for this day, oh God. Praying that you would move and have your way. We pray for everyone that is here, oh God. That you would bless them. That you would speak life and peace unto them, oh God. We thank you for what you're doing. Pray for the pastor in his absence, oh God. As he's bringing the word someplace else, oh God. That you would keep him and bless him, oh God. We honor you for what you're going to do. We pray that you would bless the offering we're about to receive, oh God. May it be used to, to build up your kingdom, oh God and to change the lives of all that we encounter, oh God. We give you praise this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.